guys. Today we are going to be talking about social studies, math, and ELA. Today for social studies we're going to be reviewing good citizenship. Then we're going to go into math. For math we're going to do some subtraction problems. Then we're going to transition to measurement. Today specifically in measurement we'll be focusing on height. Then we'll end with ELA, reading a story and then discussing the characters in the story. Please remember, after you watch the videos, please submit pictures of your assignment either through Ed Network or message or have your parent message me through Dojo. Thank you. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is good citizenship. How can you be a good citizen? You can be responsible. You can obey the laws. What does obey mean? That's right, obey means to follow. You can obey the laws. You can be kind and helpful. Can you think of any other ways to be a good citizen? Great. Now I want you to look at the picture. Look at the little girls. How do they look? Do you think they're getting along? Good citizens do their best to get along with others, but friends do not always agree about everything. As you can see, the girls look angry and upset. Do you have any ideas on how they can fix their problem? The first thing they should do is talk about it. When they talk to each other, they should remain calm, they should use quiet voices, and they should make sure that they're taking turns listening to each other. Once they're done talking, then they can decide how to best solve the problem. They can ask themselves, what is fair? After doing that, they might decide to do things like share or take turns. Now I want you to look at this picture. Remember earlier in the week, we discussed if your teacher said that you could either have 15 minutes of outside playtime or 15 minutes of inside playtime, how could your class decide what to do? It's similar to when we would work to earn the letters for awesome. It's similar to how we would decide what we would win if we got all of our letters. Remember we had several options, like for example, we could either play with Legos and blocks inside we could have a dance party, or we could have popsicles. And we did something to decide that we would earn popsicles. What did we do to decide? We raised our hands for the one that we wanted. And the one that had the most hands was the one that won, which ended up last time being popsicles. That process is called voting. Voting is a fair way to decide. It gives you the opportunity to show which option you want. And the one with the most is the one that is chosen. Now I'm going to read you a scenario. After I'm done reading the scenario, I'm going to present you with options um, of how they can solve the problem. If you agree with the option I give you, nod your head or say yes. If you disagree, <coughs> excuse me, with the option I give you, please shake your head no or say no. Are you ready? Let's go. Kim says it is her turn to be first in line. Ben says 
it is his turn. How can Kim and Ben solve the problem? Can they talk about the problem? Yes or no? Can they call each other, uh, sorry, can they call each other names? Yes or no? Can they yell loudly? Can they listen to each other? Can they use quiet voices when talking with each other? Should they ask what is fair? Or should they stop being friends? Kim says it is her turn to be first in line. Ben says it is his turn. How can Kim and Ben solve the problem? They can talk about the problem. They can listen to each other. They can use quiet voices and ask what is fair. Now I'm gonna ask you some yes or no questions. If you think the sentence is correct, say yes. If you think it is not correct, say no. Good citizens obey the laws. Yes or no? Good citizens obey the laws. Yes, they do. Voting is a fair way to decide. Voting is a fair way to decide. Yes, yes, voting is a fair way to decide. Good job. That's all for our review on good citizenship. Now we are ready to move on to math. Let's go. Take a look at this picture. What do you see? How many birds do you see in all? How many birds are flying away? There are six birds in all, and one is flying away. After the one flies away, how many are left? That's right, five. Five are left, so six minus or take away six minus one equals five. Now we're gonna do some more problems. Look at the penguins on your screen. Count all the penguins. How many penguins do we have in all? How many penguins do we have in all? We have eight penguins. Now count how many penguins are crossed out or how many we're taking away. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're taking six penguins away. So eight minus six equals how many penguins do we have left? That's right, we have two penguins left. Go ahead and write that down. Eight minus six equals two. Eight minus six equals two. Let's look at a few more problems. Now let's count how many sand cranes we have. How many sand cranes do we have in all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine sand cranes all together. How many sand cranes are crossed out or are we taking away? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're taking six sand cranes away. 
So nine minus six equals, how many sand cranes do we have left? That's right, we have three sand cranes left. So nine minus six equals three. Go ahead and write that down. Nine minus six equals three. Nine minus six equals three. When you're done writing that last one down, we're gonna move on. This will be the last subtraction problem that we do today. Now we have some black and white birds. How many black and white birds do we have all together? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight black and white birds all together. How many are crossed out or are we taking away? One, two, three. We are taking away three black and white birds. If we take away three, how many do we have left? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So eight minus three equals five. Go ahead and write that down. Eight minus three equals five. Eight minus three equals five. When you're done writing this down, we're gonna go ahead and move on to measurement. Today for measurement, we will be discussing height. Remember, when we talk about height, it, we talk about how tall or short something is. How tall or short something is. Height is vertical. Vertical means it goes up and down. Last week, we talked about length. Length also discusses how short or long something is. Length goes from side to side and is horizontal. Horizontal, length, vertical, height. To get started, I'm gonna show you some cube towers. Here we have two cube towers, a red one and a yellow one. Which one is taller? The red one. Which one is shorter? The yellow one. Great job. Now we're gonna look at some workbook pages discussing the same concept. Look at your screen. You'll see a blue cube tower and a cube tower that is not colored. Let's see, let's count how many cubes are in the blue cube tower. One, two, three. How many cubes are in the not colored cube tower? One, two, three, four. Hmm. Which one is shorter? The blue one. Which one is taller? The not colored one. Hmm. If you wanted to make a cube tower, shorter than the blue one, how many cubes would you put in it? Go ahead and draw that out.
I drew a cube tower that only had two cubes. Two is less than three. So two is shorter than three. How many cubes are in your cube tower? Now let's take another look. How many cubes were in the not colored one? Let's count again. One, two, three, four. If you wanted to make a cube tower taller than the not colored one, how many cubes could you put in it? Go ahead and draw that out. I put five cubes in my cube tower. Five is greater than four. So my cube tower is now taller than the not colored one. How many cubes did he put in your cube tower? Very nice. Now we're all done with math for today. Remember to have your parent take a picture and upload your work to Ed Networks or send it to me through Class Dojo. Thank you. Now we're moving on to the last thing for today, which is reading our story. Guess what I have? I have a book, I have a book, I have a book, I have a book, and my book has a front cover. And my book has a back cover. And my book even has a spine. And I know the spine holds the pages together. And my book has a t -t -t title. And I know that the title is the name of the book. Let's take a closer look at this title. What letters do you see? Think about the sounds that each of these letters make. Eh, mm. Eh, mm. Eh, mm. Hen. Our first word in our title is hen. This is a hen. Hen. Let's look at the next word. Then we have two vowels. Whenever we have two vowels, the first one says its name and the second one says nothing. E, he, e, er, e, er, here. And then we have a s on the end. Here's, hen, here's. Now it's time to look at our last word. G, a, s, g, a, s, gas. Goss it goss it gossip hen hears gossip. Do you know what gossip is? Gossip is when you talk about somebody else when they're not around. Gossip is usually not a good thing. People don't like being talked about when they're not around. So we're gonna read this story and we're gonna determine if these characters are being good citizens or not. Let's get started. Hen hears gossip. <coughs> Excuse me. Hen was scratching for bugs in the barnyard by the fence. Pig whispered something to cow. Gossip! Hen loved gossip. 
and put her ear up to the fence. Cow whispered something to a pig. Hen could not wait to tell her friends. Hen ran to tell Duck. Duck, Duck, see the dog has a thorn. What? said Duck. Duck ran to tell Goose. Goose, Goose, Daisy the cat grew a horn. <gasps> what? said Goose. Goose ran to tell Turkey. Turkey, Turkey, the crazy bat raised a storm. What? said Turkey. Turkey ran to tell him. Hen, hen, your lazy bat and ate all the corn? What? cried Hen. I did not eat all the corn. So Hen and Turkey went to look in the barn. The corn was not eaten. The corn was in the crib. Goose, goose, said Turkey. Why did you say Hen was lazy, fat, and had ate all the corn? I didn't say that. I said the crazy bat raised a storm. Hen and Turkey and Goose looked up at the sky. The sun was shining, not a cloud in sight, or a bat. Duck, duck, said Goose. Why did you say the crazy bat raised a storm? I didn't say that. I said Daisy the cat grew a horn. Hen and Turkey, Goose and Duck went to look for the cat. Daisy had two pointy ears and two green eyes, but no horn. Hen, hen, said Duck. Why did you say Daisy the cat grew a horn? I didn't say that. I said, Sadie the dog had a thorn. Hen and Turkey, Goose and Duck went to look for Sadie. Sadie did not have an itch or a scratch. Sadie was not in the blackberry patch. Sadie was on the porch snoring. So Hen ran to find Cow. Cow, Cow, said Hen. Why did you tell Pig that Sadie the dog had a thorn? I didn't say that. I said my baby calf was born. A new baby cow? Wow! Do you know what a calf is? A calf is the word for a baby cow. So the cow was saying that her baby was born. Hen called to the others. A baby calf was born. A fraidy cat was born? Asked Duck. A lazy rat was born? Asked Goose. A lady yak was born? Asked Turkey. No, 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 no. Not a lady yak. Not a lazy rat. Not a fraidy cat. A baby calf was born. A baby calf, said the three. Yippee, let's go see. Hen and turkey and goose and duck went to see the new baby. Ah, said goose. Oh, said turkey. Kitty, kitty, coo, said duck. And moo, said hen. Hmm. So what was this story about? Were the characters being good citizens at the beginning of the story? They were all running to their friends and sharing the news that they had heard from somebody else. About halfway through the story, we found out that what they heard was not true. So they were telling each other things that weren't true. Is that being a good citizen? Is that being helpful and being kind? No. And then they ended up looking silly because they all had the wrong information. So those weren't good choices. Towards the end, we found out that the real story was that a baby cow was born. 
Good job. Now we're going to talk about the characters. Tell me one character that was in this story. Tell me one character that was in this story. There are lots of different characters, but tell me at least one. After you think of a character, I want you to draw a picture of it and then sound out its name. As you draw a picture, I'll go through the story and show you pictures to kind of jog your memory. Go ahead and start drawing. Remember, after you're done drawing your character, try to sound out its name. After you're done drawing your character, remember to try to sound out its name. I made a list of some of the characters from this story. If you had chosen one of these characters, please check the spelling of the name you wrote and correct it if it's incorrect. Hen, hen, duck, duck. Goose, goose, turkey, turkey, daisy, daisy, and cow, cow. Remember, since this is a video, you can always pause it if you need more time to finish writing the name of your character. When you're all done, please send me, have your parents either upload a picture to Ed Networks or send me a picture through Class Dojo. Thank you. Great work today. Bye. See you next week.